Thanks for taking a look at Allendale's preview for Monday's supply demand report. This is, of course, for September 12th of 2011 here. I'm going to title this one, Tighter Supplies Ahead. So we lost some production numbers, uh, some production estimates here in August. Let's see what USDA says here for the September report. And really, before we kind of get into this, let's kind of take a, a little, little uh, do one small clarification here. Before we start these numbers, uh, we will point out that acreage, typically is not changed on this report, on the September report. Usually, USDA waits until October to make significant changes on acreage. Having said that, we will note USDA has in the past made some very minor changes. Aside from 2002, which is the yellow bar uh, where corn is, they, where they did drop, uh, they did drop harvested acres by 460,000 acres. Most of these declines are, you can tell, quarter million acres or less. So USDA can make some changes here on the September report. It's more likely they'll wait until the October one before making any major changes on acreage. And uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a, a quick look at, uh, at what we are looking at for this August scenario, yields, production, and, and go from there. As far as temperatures in July, and this is for Champaign, Illinois, we saw temperatures running actually 5% over, over normal. And uh, during pollination, it was still a very hot 4.5% over normal during July. As far as the August numbers, almost the same thing. The first three weeks of August were hotter than normal. We saw the total for the month 3.7% over normal. So July was hot, and we know August was hot as well. So I think just to have a little concern about what USDA may say about yields. As far as precip, uh, the same type of pattern emerged uh, as well. So July precip for Champagne was down about 81%, and precip uh, for, uh, for the month of August was down 67% of normal. So certainly it was hotter than normal and drier than normal as well. And actually we've shown in the, in the past uh, through various charts we released on our website uh, and through our subscription that eight of the past or eight of the top 10 states saw net drying during August. So certainly uh, we will expect to see some yield declines on uh, on Monday's report. Now, as far as visually, USDA does do visual checks each and every week for the crops out there. And you can tell from the beginning of, of August, uh, USDA was running corn, uh, good to excellent ratings, at about 62%. That's actually declined a full 10% since the beginning of August, to where now we're, uh, we're at 52%, good to excellent. So this is actually a large 12% decline compared to the red line normal for this time of year. So corn visually has taken a hit. Soybeans, the same story is, is, uh, is shown there as well. Uh, at the beginning of August, we were running around 60%, good to excellent. That's dropped now to 56%. While it's not as bad as corn, it is a decline. We do expect to see USDA to show that as well on their, on their Monday's report. So visually, both corn and soybeans are taking a little hit here since they are uh, since the USDA estimators were last in the field. Now, as a little preview, of course, we do our own yield survey, and the 2011 survey had a record number of, of respondents. Uh, we had surveys completed in 24 states, so a nice nationwide survey, uh, and our numbers is, uh, are based on in-field analysis, uh, and we did see yield drop down from 153 to 147.7. We didn't see that much of a decline for soybeans, going from USDA's 41.4 down to 40.7. So our infield analysis, which hopefully gives us a preview of what USDA will see when they're in the field as of September 1, looks like on this end we will see some, some changes there as well. Now, let's keep in mind, USDA, when they do these in-field analysis, they basically uh, have a separate procedure depending on, on how each field is as far as maturity. Right now, we are in the mid-category to later category of these three separate type of, of survey procedures. Mid, so they are doing ear counts, but they do have developed kernels. They are also doing in-field analysis, pulling back the, uh, take a look at the ear itself uh, and doing kernel counts. If the, if the field is mature enough, they will also send some of those ears to a, a state-approved lab, do further analysis, weighing the ear itself, doing adjustments for, for kernel weight, uh, for moisture, etc. So at this point, we are in the mid to later category of their three separate ways of doing analysis here.
So hopefully these numbers should be a little more on point than the early August ones. As far as production, uh, production, the trade expects a decline in, uh, as far as corn, 409 million bushels from the August estimate. For soybeans, they're talking about a 31 million bushel decline. Now, while these are declines in production, really we feel that the biggest question right now is actually not yield or production. It's actually going to be demand lined up from Monday's report. And let's take a quick look at, at uh, two of the demand centers here for corn. Number one is corn for ethanol, which is currently the biggest user of corn. Uh, interesting to see the, the past few weeks, and you can tell right here, the past five weeks actually have been pretty good production levels here. We've seen production running around from this uh, 880,000 barrels per day range up to about 904, 906,000 barrels per day. And we actually compute that we're going to do just fine meeting USDA's old crop estimate. And it's likely that this very good pace will continue for the new crop, which started as of September 1st. So we do estimate that, uh, that ethanol has no problem right now and should run just fine, even at these high corn prices. The producers are still making marginal profits. The big area of, of, of question, of course, will be feed usage. How will USDA change livestock uh, number or livestock for uh, corn for feed uh, as far as this one here looks like as far as the the livestock sector the one which has the worst problem is going to be the the, pol the poultry sector chicken accounts for the second largest feed base uh, of corn here and as you can tell by this chart if you look at the red line and you compare it with the 2010 numbers which are the orange dotted lines you'll see that you know most of these egg set numbers which is a production number we're down maybe 4 to 5% in the past couple months. The latest number is actually down a large 7%. So chicken producers have been cutting back they're, they're pretty much during this whole summer. And they've actually cut back even more in recent weeks as their losses really add up right now. So we will see some livestock producers, uh, certainly on the chicken side, take notice of, the, of this latest production decline. Now here's what we thought, which is which we very cool and very neat for you guys to to, uh, to take a look at here. USDA is not very consistent at all in adjusting demand for changes in production. Here's the past four years, and you can show them by the red bars of large production declines on the September report. There's only four that which were which had a 200 million bushel change or more in the past, uh, in fact, we went back to 1980, only four years of this large of a production decline on the September report. Now, the green bars next to it shows, well, what did USDA do to demand in that period? And we've just computed a simple percentage right next to the year uh, showing what percent of the decline in supply was offset by a decline in demand. And really, as I said before, it's very variable. In the past four times USDA has done a large supply chain on September, well, they've offset anywhere from 10 to 78 percent of that with uh, with demand. So it's very tough. It's very tough to guess what USDA is going to do on demand. Currently, the trades estimate right now, when you kind of you kind of crunch some numbers for ending stocks, you can compute what uh, what they're thinking on demand. Uh, the trade is estimating that 73 percent of this decline expected for Monday is going to be offset with demand. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at, at these orange numbers here, which show the decline in the U.S. Is, that we're, uh, that the trade is expecting for Monday's report. They expect the uh, the corn ending stocks to drop from 714 down to 636 million bushels. That's a decline of 78 million bushels. Not a large decline, con uh, considering the change in demand here. Uh, can, I, should, I should say, considering the change in supply here. As far as soybeans, dropping from 155 down to 152 million bushels. That's only a 3 million bushel drop. And as you can tell by the uh, by the wheat number, down only 4 million bushels here. So these are really not large declines at all. So the trade has this very tough uh, thing to do right now, and it's trying to price corn correctly. Uh, you can tell by the, by the light blue bars, which are on the very bottom here, these are stocks to use, which are the measurement of tightness of the corn supply. And the, the bars up on top, these uh, black ones, these are prices, corn prices of, of, in fact, corn futures. And as you can tell, since 2009, we have had a decline in stocks to use, and therefore rising prices, sharply rising prices, in fact. 
Now, how the market wants to price this one out is going to be a very tough one to decide for next week. We will see stocks to use, currently right around 5.4%. We will see that drop down to 4.4% using Allendale's number, or the average trade guess of maybe down to 4.9%. So we will see stocks to use drop to tighter than all of 2010, all of 2008, 9. In fact, the tightest numbers since the 95, 96 rally. So the trade has a very tough, uh, tough issue in front of them, and that is trying to price this market correctly, given this very moderate decline in uh, in ending stocks. If you have any questions about these issues, this report, markets, marketing. Please feel free to uh, to give us a call here, 1-800-262-7538. This may be a very important uh, report for all producers to monitor and certainly take action on with regard to grain uh, grain marketing. Uh, you can also reach us by email, research at allendale-inc.com.